Hi, my name is Hafiz. Uh, this is a tutorial for AE Touch. So I'll, here I'll be explaining uh, how to render out uh, images from Maya and get it into After Effects and how we can export the camera from Maya and locators from Maya into After Effects and how we can uh, merge these two applications to create some stunning graphics. So here we go. Hi, uh, I've divided this uh, tutorial into three parts actually. The first part I'll be explaining how to replace a small cube face which you make in Maya, get it back to After Effects, get the camera information here and we can replace one of the cube face with an image in After Effects. And then part two will be to export the Maya render which we'll be making for this billboard, export again the camera information, locator information and the Luma channels, how do we export Luma channels using contribution maps in Maya and how do we get back to After Effects etc. So once we have this part one and part two, then we'll go to part three where that will be the final part where I'll um, finally we'll make the sequence what I'm showing here. Fine. Thank you. Hi, so here is Maya right now. So the idea is to create a, a small a box here in Maya and we'll try make a small animation and export it to After Effects and see how to do it basically. So right now I'm going to create a polygon rectangle. So I click on it, the space bar to expand it, I'm just drawing a basic box, space bar again, press 6, get the text screen. So now we need to make an animation here, so we go to rendering tab, create a camera, click on it, the camera is created, so we go to panels, change view to camera, so zoom out, set this basic thing, and so right now we're going to create a small animation, so go to the first frame, go to the camera, click on key, Set the keyframe for the first frame, go to the last frame, just do a small pan and just say key again. That way we create this basic uh, animation displayed for you. So that's it, done. So, so we're gonna create this, right? So right now we need to render this out first. So for that we go to the render globals, render settings. And I'm rendering using Maya software, so that will be faster right now. So I'm just naming this file name as a TV box. Okay, it doesn't look like a TV. TV box. Image format can be anything. So I'll just choose Targa. It's my favorite. So then I'll go to single frame. I'll just change to the animation sequences. And you have to give the start frame and end frame 60. So 1 to 60 frames will be outputted and the file names will be given like this. So if it's because uh, frame padding is 1, it starts with 1, it doesn't say 0, 1, etc. So I'll just make it 2. So it starts saying 0, 1. This is kind of um, uh, important when you're actually rendering out bigger sequence because uh, some softwares actually need them to be in this uh, order for importing, etc. You'll note later. So just make it 2 so that it'll start from 0, 1 to 60. And you can and uh, frame range is set and there's a rentable camera we send to this camera come down and the image presets and 640 by 480 is given that's fine but i probably want to change to HD 720 that's it close and go to render hit patch render okay so the animation has been rendered out so that's fine now we get a sequence so we must understand that the output rendered by Maya is fundamentally a 2D image. I hope we know that. Just wanted to hint that out. So done. So so now the main 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 thing to make sure that After Effects understands how to read the Maya files. So basically our idea. Okay, let me go to the perspective view. So the idea is to actually get these coordinates here, this corner, so that we can uh, replace that with an image in After Effects. For that we need a kind of null object here or a locator which will actually give you all the uh, three-dimensional information so for that how do you create you go to create and click on locator just press w and you can see a locator locator is nothing but uh, like a null object in after effects so you got it so you can actually uh, place it properly in the corner you can use any of the orthogon i mean ortho views to set it it's up it's down just setting it properly it's up Fine, I think this will do. Yeah, I think this will do. Right, so you have this null object here. This is what is going to be actually replaced by an image, okay? So, but before doing that, this name of this locator is called as locator one. So, when you export this out to After Effects, After Effects will not recognize this as a null object unless it is renamed this way. So, you go to Window, Outliner. 
So this locator has to be prefixed by the words null, word null in small or in caps or in mixed format, whatever. So it has to be called as null in front. So I just call it as null underscore say I'll say screen one done. So it's done. So we have a, and if you see uh, the axis, this is X and this is Z and this is Y, which is exactly as after effects. So we don't have to do, worry about anything. So that's it. We are done actually. So I'll save this um, file as to AE test. It's done. So now before exporting out, there's one last thing you need to do. If you realize, uh, if you go to the camera settings, uh, this animation is there, but there are no key keyframe informations in between the first frame and the last frame. So what we need to do is create keyframes for each of these frame information so that After Effects will understand how to animate it. So to do that, it's pretty simple in uh, Maya. So go to Window, click on Outliner, click on the camera, then go to Edit, Keys, and the Bake Simulation. So Bake Simulation will fundamentally add keyframes for all these frames. So what I'll do is I'll select the camera and this null screen and go to edit keys bake simulation. So it actually baked the simulation and if you see here red lines here it means uh, each frame is a keyframe right, right now. So it has all the information. So now make sure you go to file and save it because uh, whatever baked information came out actually doesn't get saved in that Maya file. If you see this Maya file is saved. That's it we have done. I think most part in Maya. So now let's go to After Effects and where we can do some magic. Okay, here we are in After Effects. Great place to be. Yeah. So right now, the first thing will be to import the composition. So import the Maya file. So double click here or in any of your go to that uh, your directory. Okay, so this is what I saved it as to a test. And if you see this composition crop, just say open. And once you open, um, my After Effects creates a composition of the name of the same of the same file. So to a test, and you can see it's one two eight zero and seven twenty square pixels. That's what we created. It's two seconds and twenty four frames per second. So double click on it, you get it here. This is this is what you get the output. This is just the Maya file, which has basically the camera information and the null object information. So if you click on Press U in the camera, so you can see all this information here, the camera information. This All this data came after that baking. So if you're not done the baking, probably you have just got the first frame. So now we got it here, and we have a null object here. If you can press U, and you can see the null object's information here. Great. So now it's going to be pretty simple. Now we import the image now. This is what we exported out. Click on TV box. Target sequence, say open, fine. You get this and drag and drop it here. That's it, you got it. So we have this box and we have this null object um, with null, which is like so big. So what we can do is um, just click on S and you know what, actually speaking, if you press U, you get all this um, keyframe information. And if you notice, um, none of the values change for null. That's because um, it's already oriented towards that camera for the first time and basically it doesn't need to change because the camera is actually moving and not this null object. So we can get rid of all this uh, keyframe information so it will just align properly if you see this. That's one small tip there. And just press S and uh, the scale it down. We'll scale it to say 4 or something or just whatever. You can size it here also. Great. Now we have it exactly framed here and we can just move the animation and see it's exactly sitting in place. Okay. So right now you can just go in and put an image. Um, see some, some image and we can replace this null object with this image. So what you have to do is press an alt, click, drag and drop it here. It drops it here but not able to see anything because uh, Press opacity T is 0, that will make it 100 and the size is too big. Press S and get it down and we can just position it where, however we like it. That's it, done. You can just do a RAM preview. Here we are, done. The box was created in Maya. 
this image is created in After Effects and we have done this. Sounds cool. Okay, so I just want to tell you something here which uh, which are pitfalls, I mean which I found out after some research. So uh, right now everything worked because all the frame settings, everything were right. But how was it right? You need to know that. So when we imported this um, Maya file, it created, After Effects created a composition and when you click on this composition, if you see this uh, information area, it shows you 24 frames per second. So how did After Effects know that this is 24 frames per second unless it is contained in this uh, Maya file? So probably we, Maya has set this to 24 frames per second. So how does Maya do that? Let's go to Maya. So if you go to Window, Settings and Preference, you'll get this preference screen and there is this thing called settings here and if you see here it's set here 24 frames per second so basically you can change what frames you want here so that that's the main thing so this is how 24 frames came there and my, that is how it's here and then a general problem what happens is one and okay let's see this render which came out from Maya and when you click on this and you can see it's 24 frames per second so how did After Effects know that this is 24 frames per second and not 30 frames per second or whatever? So actually After Effects has an um, option, go to Edit Preference and if you go to the Import, okay, and you can see this 24 frames per second sequence footage. So this is set to 24 and hence this is 24. So if it was 30, then probably I'll tell you what happens. I'll just put it to 30. So I think gen by default it is 30, I guess. So if it's 30 and I'll re-import the image. I'll re-import the image. And it shows 30 frames per second. And I just um, cut this out and I'll just drop this in. And if you see it matches for the first frame, but if you move the screen slips. So this is probably you would have faced it a lot of times. And you would have thought no, the alignment of camera between Maya and After Effects is wrong, but probably you're frame settings were wrong so if you see it's already gone for a toss so I'll just delete this out and get the older one in so that's the tip so just make sure all the um, frames are right frame sizes are right between Maya and After Effects that's more important so right now we have a perfect aligned uh, screen with the Maya so this was basics of uh, how to export from Maya to After Effects and how to do it so now let's get back to our original problem of how to export that uh, with the Luma maths and contribution maps etc from Maya to After Effects. Hi, um, so now we are back in Maya uh, with the actual model which we are going to work on. This is just a small billboard which I modeled up, very simple. So uh, what I am going to show you here is how to get the alpha out for uh, rendering in uh, Maya using Mendel Ray so that um, we can get the picture to be floating exactly on the board without these uh, obstructions. So if you just take a quick render of this, uh, it looks like this. Okay, it's gonna render again. Okay, so this is what you're gonna get the render and if you hit this button, you can see the alpha and if you just notice the alpha just around the borders and not on the actual objects obstructing the the board so what we need is an alpha of only the board and without all these uh, lights information etc so to do that we need to do something called as um, contribution mapping but before that just let me show you something about rendering um, in Maya using mental ray which is pretty important so this is the render settings of Maya and if you can click on okay you have to select first mental ray here see click on mental ray otherwise uh, you don't get the second uh, tab called as passes to show you that this software you don't see that mental ray you see this passes thing so you click on this passes this is where you actually render out all the 3d passes from Maya so to do that first we need to add a pass which we need so first click on this button here and most of the time right this will be blocked like this I don't know for some strange reason and you can just expand this you, you'll be able to see this button so click on this button first and you can see all these passes what you have uh, to explain all what this passes does it's probably pretty lengthy procedure and I think uh, you have an excellent tutorial on cmivfx.com so I think you can refer that. So at this moment we are just going to take the beauty pass here and um, 
we're gonna take this pass called as mat this is the alpha mat pass which we, we will get so what you have to do is just click on these two and just say create and close so now you got these two passes here and until unless uh, this list moves to this list you know, Maya will not render so for do the do that just click on this button and you got it here so now if you hit render and see you basically get the beauty pass which is actually the rendered final output and the matte pass so if this matte pass if you see it will basically um, look like this which is not what we want so we want the uh, obstructed alpha information also so we close this and uh, if you see below you see something called as um, pass contribution map let me explain you how it works close this and so since we want the alpha information for this board so you click on this board so it's basically an, an object uh, it's basically a rectangle which I just cut it out so you click on this and uh, press ctrl a and go to the attribute editor and uh, you see the settings below so display render and animals click on the render and if you click on render you have one master master layer which actually renders out all the um, elements in the scene so but we want to create a separate render layer and a contribution map only for this board so that's why I clicked on this board and I come here in master layout I just right click and I come down to pass contribution maps and I click on create pass contribution map and add selected I click on it and you can see an arrow here if we expand it says pass contribution map so I right now created a contribution map for this board only so right now if I go to my render settings again and, and if you see right now so we want the contribution map only for the mat so I clicked on this mat and here select pass contribution map I click on it and I click on pass contribution map if you see it's here pass contribution map which we just created so I select that so I'm so what I'm asking Maya to do is render out me a mat for this object using pass contribution map so that I can get the alpha obstructed alpha and I hit this button again and it comes here so this mat I will get so now I go back to common I just set the settings like earlier so I'm just using one frame right now to just render out to see what happens so I'll say, say close and I go to render and hit batch render okay now we have rendered it out um, we have rendered these uh, beauty passes and the mat, mat passes if you go to the common I have uh, fixed up a directory like second and screen and you can see the path here so if you can just go to that path and under images you'll see one beauty pass under that one second directory which we created and the mat and the second and there's this uh, another folder called master beauty that will be the master beauty pass which just gets generated uh, by default so if I click on second and just double click on it you can see this is the actual beauty pass what we have and if you look at the mat click on second and that's it now we got the mat of that uh, board with these um, alpha information so that we can use this luma mat for in after effects so let me explain you how so we are back to Af after effects and this is the uh, first render which we have and this is the luma mat which we have so but using these I'm gonna put an uh, image on this uh, board with this mat so I'll show you how so I go to screen one and basically I have our uh, it's a new composition and basically I have our uh, render what we got here and I've just put an image over it just like that actually I've used uh, a corner pin right now just to tuck it in the corners and clearly the problem is evident that this image is not behind these lights and that is the reason we rendered it out the luma mat so now we take that luma mat and put on top of this it covers so press F4 and for the second layer just select track as luma mat here we go so now we can see that image is behind these lights on it falling exactly on the board so this luma mat actually helped us out um, to put this back and it was actually created using that contribution map uh, trick not trick probably the step what we explained so now we'll repeat this for the board behind 
and we will render out entire sequence and then we'll see how we can export it into After Effects again. So. Okay, now since we know how to uh, create the contribution map for one of the board, let's try to create for all the, uh, the other board behind. So I'll just uh, kind of repeat the steps again. Um, just click on this board first. You come to this layer in render settings. Just click on right click. Pass contribution map. Say create pass contribution map and add selected. Creates one. So I'll just double click, rename it as uh, screen one. And I got this and then uh, click on this board. Right click, go to pass contribution maps. Click on create pass contribution maps. It creates, I'll say screen two done so we have created contribution maps for these two remember we create contribution maps to get the alpha render dot separately for these uh, objects in uh, Maya so then we go to render settings go to I'll just remove this so let it be like screen and it has uh, so we can actually delete it and right click here and say insert see um, pass name render pass type and whatever so i'll just put uh, render pass name slash uh, screens target sequence and uh, frame 3 and 1 to 60 and use the camera not the perspective camera but the render camera and the uh, size is the 720 everything is done so we go to passes so we need to add the passes what we want so i just click on this button so i'm not going to click on the beauty pass because anyway it automatically comes as master beauty so you don't have to add it so i need to add the matte pass and for the first screen i'm just calling it as screen one matte create and close it creates that and i add one more for the next one so i'll call it as screen two Mat. so we gonna generate two passes basically two mats for these two screens so I select both add to the associate passes so now if I render out I'll get the mats but uh, actually we need to associate each mat with the contribution map so that the isolated luma mat is generated so I click on screen one mat first and click on here and I select screen one pass contribution map which we created here for the first board click on it and click this button it's associated with it that's fine then click on the next one next pass and select that contribution map screen to pass contribution map and say add done so now we have these two already associated with this and uh, path is set close we are ready to go and just hit render i'll just be back once this comes in Okay, now we are back to After Effects. Now we'll import the Maya saved file, which is in the scenes directory, new project scenes. Um, just click on billboard, say open. We have this billboard here, 1280720, square pixels, 2 seconds, 2.12 seconds, 24 frames. We double click on it, and this is the composition which uh, After Effects creates. And you can see uh, both our nulls are there very happily, and they are rotating exactly. In the camera angle so it's there shape 1 and shape 2 like last time I'll press U and uh, take out the keyframe information we don't need it actually this these keyframes came because in the baking I had selected these uh, null objects so we got it so now it looks fine so now we'll import the renders go to images uh, master beauty select select the uh, output from what we have from Maya and just say open say ok here and we got it we'll take it and put it here below ok that there we have it if you just notice the angle is a little different from what I showed you earlier in Maya so I just re-rendered and got a, a different uh, animation just change the camera that's all so this is the animation we have so we need to first make sure that our nulls are aligned properly so the first null is here you can see this is going to be the null for this frame and this null is here this is going to be the null for the back frame you can see it here you can see the perspective changing etc cool so so if you look at this uh, this null uh, you can see the z is pointing um, to inside so so this this was done like that because in maya 
so uh, in Maya uh, I should have rotated back to the Z space which I didn't so which is uh, easily done here in After Effects I just have to click on R and rotation 180 degrees Lo, I got it back so I got it back so just wanted to show you this I made that mistake in Maya so that uh, you can see how it is done in After Effects so now it's pointing towards us which is perfect and I can just scale it down like so just uh, yep, that's it now I can go back to the other screen other null click here scale it down set it up cool that's it done so if you can just uh, scrub it through you can see that the nulls are sitting perfectly on that now our job is just to put the images here so I just picked up some two images from uh, flickr.com um, that's here back um, I just picked up these two images uh, and just cut out the sequence okay so this is courtesy username wonderlane from uh, flickr so I'll just pick the first image and put it here just before null one this is for null one and uh, i'll make it a three layer and it's gone because the camera is different the it's, it's here so first thing what we need to do is uh, press p on the first null shape copy the position and press p on this image and press paste so now we got the picture aligned with the null screen and um, we have it here and you can just do a scale to get it back so once I scale you can see something here so the anchor point for this image is actually on the center right on the center whereas for the null object it's actually on the zero zero origin so it will be worthwhile to make the anchor, po anchor point of this image to zero zero so that we can easily uh, position it according to the null frame so please don't forget it just press A on null and see the anchor point is a 0 0 0 just press a on this that's actually some other value so we just change it to 0 so we change it to 0 and exactly maps it and we just need to rotate it once 180 degrees so that it fits right that's it now we have got it here now I can easily position it wherever I want exactly sitting on the frame I think it, it fits right great so now I'll just repeat that for the next uh, next uh, null so we'll just pick up the next frame next photograph just put it here so I'll copy the position of that thing not null and paste it here make it a 3d sorry paste it here press s get the scale down and just check out the anchor point at zero I press A again here and make it zero that's it and I can kind of position it exactly where I want okay that's done so you can see the images are exactly sitting here so now there's a huge problem here so if you can see the photograph is in actually front of these um, floodlights so we need to get it back so as so we don't need to worry because we already have the luma mats for that which we'll import here right now which was um, we rendered it out in Maya so that will be the first uh, go to images directory I click on screen one mat click this mat target sequence get it in fine click again get the other mat screen two select one target sequence fine okay we have to so the first one we take just put it right in front about the first image here which is this and press F4 and just say luma mat for the first frame and low you can see it's standing perfectly fine we can see the reflection of the early one we'll fix that right in a moment so now get the next luma mat, put it above the first frame. Let's say luma mat. That's it. Done. So if you can see right now, the image has gone behind the floodlights. It's perfect. And you can come here and see. Same here. 
that's cool that's how it works so now we we'll just just change the uh, blending mode of uh, this image to say um, multiply and this one to multiply so multiply looks good or what see only whichever I think only looks brighter and that is worse screen is bad okay multiply for now because of the color what we have in this render so I think multiply looks okay so there we go so we have uh, the image rendered out from uh, Maya and we have replaced the board with uh, After Effects uh, and all these images here so just do a quick ramp preview cool so there was just a uh, just the small animation which we got from uh, Maya. It, the animation is totally 360 degrees. Just wanted to do that so that uh, you could actually see the obstructing uh, objects getting out and the images coming in. So, but if you notice here, we have a small problem. So, once this comes here, the image is visible behind that. So, what we can do is just before this, we can just uh, click here get the opacity mark it to 100 press page down go to the next frame make it zero that's it gone so now you carry forward come front just before it comes up here you can set another keyframe spread page down and set it to 100 so that will solve the problem of uh, that visibility here so the same we need to do for the other uh, image so it starts off at zero opacity we'll cut it down to zero let's come here just just before it comes in right here set a keyframe page down just set it to 100 so that comes back I think it's fine yep so again uh, we set it here before it disappears uh, right here yep right here set opacity page down set it to zero that's it I think we are good to go now so uh, this is how you know, a small workflow between Maya and After Effects and I'll just do a ramp review I'll press shift zero so that it skips uh, one frame and we get a faster ramp review and you can see it's already done perfectly fine now since you have this uh, null information and this camera you can do any kind of animation in this uh, setup which I'll just show you in a moment what I have done with this technique and so that you can use find it useful for doing anything you want hi so um, here is what I uh, finally made uh, using the technique what I explained so it is just uh, the same uh, <coughs> billboard but uh, rendered out using mental ray with some other materials etc so I have taken the same steps and uh, actually uh, if you can see these are the same uh, screens with the billboard build the uh, with the loom mat and added some uh, particulars and some floodlights behind if you can see this uh, white things that's using cell pattern and some ceiling comb this which is this uh, fractal noise behind and some flares using uh, null, null factory so I just uh, gotten this from uh, cinema 40 so it's now in 3d so this is one screen and uh, this is another one and uh, this is another one so these are the three uh, different screens which I made uh, to put it in this billboard so finally uh, you can see how it's coming out here so uh, thank you for watching this tutorial this was uh, I know it was a long tutorial but I hope I got to cover whatever I want to do and you are now comfortable doing uh, any Maya exports to After Effects and make some cool graphics so thanks once again this is Hafiz here for uh, eTuds.com thank you bye bye